The death of Lisa McPherson was a watershed moment in the history of the Church of Scientology. In November 1995, the 36-year-old Scientologist suffered a mental breakdown and was taken to the church's Fort Harrison Hotel in Clearwater. Scientology staffers kept her in isolation as they tried to nurse her back to health, but she died after 17 days. The tragedy resulted in a criminal investigation, a lawsuit, and worldwide attention. It also became a thorn in the side of Scientology's young leader, David Miscavige. During most of his career, Marty Rathbun was one of Miscavige's top lieutenants. He says the case marked a turning point for Miscavige. In November 1999 was a big snapping point with the guy because Judge Moody in the civil case allowed him to be named in an amended complaint. That was like the explosions of all explosions um, that he was now potentially going to get deposed and be embroiled and his name would be embroiled in that litigation and uh, I don't think he ever recovered from that quite frankly I mean the guy was a deteriorating spiral from that point forward he became progressively more uh, antagonistic violent irrational regularly David Miscavige would in the middle of a conference in a conference room full of people at the int base physically assault and uh, punch, slap open-handed, grab by the neck, throw to the floor. Uh, a number of international executives, Mark Yeager. In, in the 2000s, I probably saw him get beat up pretty severely half a dozen to a dozen times. Ray Midoff, he would regularly hit this guy open-handed upside the head real hard and, and jar him. Mike Rinder, Probably got it worse than anybody else. I saw him get beat up at least a dozen times just in those last four years or so that I was in. And some of them were pretty, pretty gruesome. Rinder walked away from Scientology about two years ago. Just before he left, Ms. Cabbage wanted him to put the brakes on a BBC story about rumors that the leader had attacked Scientology staffers. When the BBC confronted him in 2007, Rinder denied that Ms. Cabbage had hit anyone. Mr. Miscavige is concerned. He has never thumped you. Absolutely. And he's not an adult. He's never thumped you. You're anonymous. You're anonymous source. Okay. Okay. Today, Rinder says he witnessed Miscavige physically attack church staffers and was attacked himself some 50 times. Amy Scobie, a former top executive who worked in the church for more than 25 years, says she too witnessed Miss Cavage's attacks. For much of her service, she was stationed at Scientology's base outside of Los Angeles, where her office cubicle backed up to a large conference table Miss Cavage frequently used for his meetings. David jumps up onto the table and across the table at Jeff Hawkins, who was a marketing manager at the time, and knocked him over, grabbed him around the neck, and was strangling him and pulling out his clothes. He had buttons popping. It was just all happening right at my feet. Three defectors interviewed by the Times say they were among 30 or so people who were made to play a game of musical chairs. According to Rathbun, it started when the leader decided staffers were undermining him and in low ethical conditions. Ms. Cavage wanted them transferred or offloaded from the base. He says, I've decided how we're going to get the offloads done. So he comes in and he makes everybody arrange the chairs around the big conference table and flip them backwards so the chairs are facing out. And he says, you all remember uh, musical chairs from your childhood. There was this whole twisted thing about it too because he played this song, Bohemian Rhapsody. The one by Queen? By Queen, yeah, and, he, and, he, uh, and there was all this significance attached to it because you, you've all committed these heinous crimes against humanity and now you're in the same position as this guy in the song that nothing matters anymore, right? So this song got played over and over all night long as he played this sadistic game of musical chairs. But there was people, you know, ramming people in like, you know, cross body blocks into the walls and you know, ripping people's clothing off, and you know, it was, it was really, uh, really, really pretty sickening. The Church of Scientology says the defectors are lying. 
they have dug up tired allegations from the Internet and inflated the importance of the positions that they held in Scientology's dedicated workforce known as the Sea Org. They say it was the defectors who physically abused staff members, and when Miss Cabbage found out, he put a stop to it and demoted them. Many of those interviewed for this story say they still believe in the principles of Scientology, but cannot maintain membership in the church under the rules of Scientology. I couldn't get beyond the fact that I observed what I observed, and I uh, will not change that. And there is no amount of confessionals that are going to change what I saw. I had been somehow making it right and okay in my mind that certain things were going on, like him hitting these people. But it's not okay. I decided if I don't remove myself from this environment, something really ugly is going to happen. And uh, so I watched it. I restrained myself. And then we all went back up to the SP Hall, except I slipped out to the side into the bushes, went and retrieved my motorcycle, and wheeled it down the hill, got it over by the back gate. As the car went out, and before the gate closed, I gunned it and headed off down the road. And that's the last I saw of the end pace.